good evening and welcome to everyone for uh, this interesting intro to spark machine learning library framework so what are we going to talk today what are we going to discuss today and what are we going to learn together today so we'll start with the first question what do we mean by machine learning then we will uh, learn about the basics of what is spark and then we will uh, drive deep down into spark machine learning libraries and its components like feature engineering and uh, advanced modeling concepts and then we will uh, finally look at some excellent uh, model development uh, frameworks like pipeline and model tuning and then finally Inita will uh, uh, explain to you these concepts through two practical case studies so that's the agenda for today before I start, uh, these are the two case studies that Nita will be talking about. Uh, we will be taking up uh, market segmentation and uh, the other thing is to predict what favorite songs, how to predict what favorite songs for a particular person. So, but first, we'll understand uh, what we are talking about here. Uh, before that, uh, I just want to make uh, set the expectations straight. Here uh, today we are talking about Spark machine learning and uh, we are going to go through the concepts at a very high level on the assumption that um, the audience has no prior knowledge on any machine learning or Spark related concepts. For those who have intermediate or advanced knowledge, we will be conducting subsequent sessions where we will uh, deep drive deep down into one or many of those concepts. So for this particular topic, for this particular uh, presentation, it will be on a very high level touching the basics of machine learning and Spark. Okay, let's start with what, what is machine learning. We have heard about this um, machine learning phrase a lot in recent times. But uh, did you know that machine learning has been there for some decades now? This is not something that, uh, that has been uh, in uh, practice very recently. This has been in practice for long now. But it has definitely gotten some uh, popularity in the past few years. We will see why is that. But before that, we will see what is machine learning. Machine learning is, at a, at a very practical sense, machine learning is any algorithm or model which can learn from itself. If you feed in data based on the past data and its patterns, it can uh, derive conclusions on, its, on itself instead of uh, needing to explicitly program on how to predict or how to uh, make predictions. So the, the advantage of machine learning then becomes that uh, the data analytics development part becomes automated. Uh, the human involvement becomes very less. That's the learning part of the machine. The machine learns from the past data and makes prediction on its own. Learning and adapting intelligently. That's machine learning at a very high level. And why are we talking about that now? Uh, why is that being the flavor of uh, the analytics world now? As I said, uh, we have been um, doing, machines have been doing complex tasks since lot, since uh, 1950s since the advent of supercomputers but only recently we had both the opportunity and means to democratize the analytics process for example now even you and i can do um, machine learning tasks and develop algorithms which were which were earlier restricted to say probably bell labs and ibms of the world self-driving cars so machine learning uh, helps in identifying objects surrounding the car so there are uh, sensors interior and ex exterior to the car which identifies objects so i need to uh, distinguish between a person versus a signal so object identification and then once that object is identified how that object will behave so prediction of the movement of that object okay here is a man so probably he will walk as opposed to here's a lamp post it will not move so machine learning helps in identifying the objects so if i see an object i should identify yeah, the car should identify it as a man versus say lamppost so identification and then prediction of the movement and then from the past patterns predicting where how it will move or how the object will behave this is one application of machine learning and then uh, even in sports machine learning is uh, now a great deal uh, to reckon with so uh, everyone would have uh, 
heard of Tour de France, which is a biking competition, uh, is a premier biking competition in the world. So uh, now what the, the participants are doing is that they are getting the environment data about the climate, say tomorrow what the climate is going to be, and about information about the past patterns of the competitors. How did the competitor A or competitor B um, uh, ride the bike in this condition, say last year? So there's lots of data to derive from, and based on that, I can uh, I and my team can make some strategies on. Okay, I, I will drive a little faster. I will meet in this speed. I will uh, catch up to that guy. These are just two simple examples among the numerous applications of machine learning. And another question that comes to most of our minds is how is then machine learning different from traditional statistical modeling that we have been doing for many years now so uh, first let me talk about the statistical modeling uh, both both of these frameworks or both, both of these use statistics to a large extent but the traditional statistical modeling uh, what it does is it is a, it's a very structured framework for example, first we have to come up with a hypothesis and then there are very uh, exact definitions about the data and its behavior and also the distributions that the data has to follow and each and every uh, uh, model there are very exact definitions. So you have to read the data and then uh, you have to understand the data and based on the data and the objective you need to follow one or many uh, models that's the approach that you would have, would have been followed. But with the availability of machine learning there is lots and lots of processing power and there is storage is also available. So uh, how uh, model development is being done right now using machine learning is there are no assumptions about the data and its behavior. All the data is being fed into one or many models and whichever model gives the best data we just go and choose that. That's the, way, that's the approach we do that. And some of the terms that I want to familiarize with you, uh, for those who have worked on statistical modeling traditionally, uh, would have uh, known about independent variables and target variables and so forth. Now, uh, with the, within the machine learning world, we call them as features and labels. Features are the independent variables, uh, approximately independent variables, and the labels are the dependent variables which we are going to predict. So we, you will hear a lot of words about features, labels, and data frames, and so forth. Okay, till now we saw the basics of machine learning. Any questions you can uh, go ahead and ask. There's also a Q&A session at the end of uh, our session. At the end of this presentation, we can discuss then also. But if you have any questions, please ask. Okay, if there is, uh, then we will go to uh, the, our next section, which is uh, looking into what is Spark. So, Spark is getting very popular these days it's a very very powerful and probably the most popular current uh, open source cluster computing framework so you have a, a framework available wherein you have a processing and uh, you have storage this particular processing framework uh, can talk to a traditional databases the data can be stored in traditional ways in files or in um, uh, uh, Hadoop file systems or uh, new NoSQL databases, the data can uh, reside anywhere and Spark can talk to that. But uh, uh, the advantage here is that Spark can do the processing in memory. So uh, it has been uh, found in many tests that for the same problem, Spark does better than the Hadoop MapReduce, probably 100 times faster. How, how does it do that? Uh, so the machine, uh, the in-memory framework allows the data to be stored, uh, the temporary data uh, in the middle of doing uh, the processing to be stored in memory instead of writing to a disk or a file every time and then reading and writing uh, for the next particular process. So the input output uh, taken to read the data and write the data is permitted here. Everything is stored in memory and then the processing is made till we achieve the final results. And uh, here you see the four blocks of um, uh, Spark. These are the libraries that are available which, which enable various functionalities. So you have the Spark SQL and data frames wherein uh, you can do traditional SQL-like uh, database querying and altering tables and reading and writing. And then uh, the next one you have the streaming data which is uh, very 
very rapidly gain, gaining prominence. So you have very uh, real life feeding data like say Twitter feeds or stock market information or uh, any web uh, comments that come out. So there are lots of information that comes regularly and at a very uh, rapid intervals. So these uh, you need uh, you need some uh, some framework to get those to read those and then to process those. So streaming is streaming contains a set of libraries uh, that are provided by Spark to process streaming data. And then the third part is the machine learning uh, library, which is what we will be uh, going through in detail today. So this is for the advanced analytics. So uh, once you have data available in uh, any form or any place, you can crunch them and you can use it to do advanced prediction and even to do text mining capabilities. And then the fourth uh, library that is available in Spark is the graphics, which is the graph graph processing database. And these four libraries are uh, supported by these five languages. So Spark has APIs, uh, so you can write the codes uh, essentially in R or Python or Scalar, Java or SQL. So these are the five APIs available. Uh, and uh, with the growing popularity of Spark, uh, I'm sure that they will increase uh, many more languages as and when they become popular. So to recap, Spark is a, a open source cluster computing framework. Uh, it does processing in memory and is one of the fastest computing frameworks currently in the market. Okay, uh, we'll go into the machine learning libraries. These are the high level um, capabilities of machine learning libraries within Spark. So you have two broad categories. You have feature engineering and modeling. So features, as we saw, are the uh, attributes that are needed to do uh, a model. These are the uh, independent variables that are used for prediction. So feature engineering means you need to do some transformation, extraction, and selection, essentially some manipulation of the features to make it model ready. The data that we get for any uh, um, modeling per se is not clean. It needs to be clean. There are so many missing values, so it has to be imputed. So there's a lot of manipulation that need, the data has to be, uh, that data has to go through. So those are uh, these tasks. So these categories say feature extraction, selection, and others deal with manipulating the data so as to make it modeling ready. I'll go through each of this in detail. And then the second part is the actual modeling part. So you have uh, various types of modeling depending on what your objective function is. So you do one or many of them to achieve the objectives. We will see each of this also in detail. And then uh, Spark gives model tuning capabilities, meaning once I develop a model to predict, uh, say, what the future stock price will be, I can uh, iterate through the model and make the model better and better. So there are lots of model tuning um, capabilities that are available, which I can apply on the model that I've already developed. I will explain this also in detail. So you have a feature engineering set of capabilities to make the data model ready. And then you have uh, uh, another set of actually modeling algorithms you apply on the actual data to achieve your objective function, whatever it may be. And the whole thing uh, is within a framework called pipeline, which I will explain in a bit, which essentially uh, eases the model development process. I will explain to you how. So these are the various components of the Spark Machine Library that you need to know at a high level. We'll go through each of this in detail. Okay, first, uh, within the feature engineering, we saw uh, the first component was feature extraction. Feature extraction uh, means a set of capabilities that is normally applied on a text data. So uh, I can have names, addresses, um, rem uh, uh, remarks or lots of verbose textual data which needs to convert it, which needs to be converted into numerical data to be uh, used in any of those models. So the numerical data can be categorical or otherwise, but first I have to convert those text into numerical data. So these feature extraction are those capabilities which convert the text into numerical data. For example, if I want to find out uh, the prevalence of a term in a document, okay, which is the most recurring word in a document, I want to do a sentiment analysis of uh, a movie review, whether he's saying whether it's good or bad. So I can just do uh, 
count of the words that are recurring in that particular 100 word review to get an indication of what is the sentiment is like. So these are the initial set of tools to convert texts into words that will then be used for modeling. And also uh, you can generate vocabularies through uh, creating tokens. These are some of the other examples wherein you make the data, convert the data from a textual format to something that is, can be used by models. Feature selection. Uh, once, uh, if any of you have worked in any modeling, you would uh, definitely know by now that uh, any data has lots and lots of information that is available. You need to pick and choose which features or which variables or which attributes are necessary for, for, for your model. So there are some capabilities uh, that are available in Spark, which enables you to pick and choose those variables which might be helpful for your model. For example, uh, the sky-square uh, selector selects those variables which are statistically significant uh, up from the rest of the, the other variables. This is just one example. Then this feature transformation is probably the most important thing because as analytics professionals, we spend almost 70% of our time doing this as opposed to the actual modeling which is done very faster. So feature transformation means changing or manipulating the data so that uh, it gets transferred to the form and shape that we want for modeling. Some of the examples are uh, if it's a string I want to convert into an index or if it is a, um, if there are some outliers I want to bring them into uh, some range of values and then I want to uh, normalize some values to be within uh, to be in the form of a distribution because some, uh, some of the downstream analytics require the data in that way. And also I want to remove, if I'm doing some text mining uh, uh, analysis, uh, I, want, I don't want some words like prepositions like the, and, and uh, in, and all. So I want to remove those and I want to have clean set of data. So these are some of the tasks that we end up doing before we start the actual modeling. These come under the bucket of capabilities called feature transformations. All of this will be showed uh, by Neeta when she uh, does the case study. So uh, if you have any questions, you can bring them or uh, that will be more clearer when she does that. And then uh, another uh, interesting component is called as hashing. Uh, that also is available in Spark. Uh, this is mostly done in the field of uh, cryptography. This is converting uh, an available set of words into some uh, manageable numbers or codes. For example, uh, if there are lots and lots of customer names here, instead of storing them as John Smith, which, which occupies space, I will give it a code or a hash code called 873. So that I, from the downstream models, know that 873 refers to a text called John Smith. And whenever I need to look up John Smith, I will look up 873 instead of the exact word John Smith. So hashing is giving a code, hash code to a particular uh, verbose text or even a very big number. Why do we do that? Uh, we want to uh, find out which rows or which observations are very close to each other. So hashing is done in uh, cryptography as one application and also we want to see uh, nearest neighbors, which two values are nearest to each other, so as texts. So for that also caching is used. We are going to the uh, interesting part where uh, we will talk about the actual model development process. So uh, with all the steps that I just talked about, we have prepped the data. The data is now analytics ready and we are good to go. Now, uh, there, are, as I uh, showed you before, there are more than one ways uh, of modeling that we can use depending on what our objective function is. So regression is something that we would all heard about it before and many of us would have already used it. Um, so what is regression? Regression is normally used if you want to predict a continuous variable, say uh, stock price. I want to predict the stock price of a particular company over the next 30 days based on the past performance of the stock price of that company, based on the price of the competitors, based on the general economic uh, indicators and also some political risks, let's say. So these are all the factors that may influence the stock price of a particular um, co company. And based on that, I will make a prediction that this is going 
stock price of uh, say Amazon is going to eleven hundred dollars, and uh, today it's around nine hundred uh, something dollars. So uh, I will consider it as a good bargain, and I will invest on it. So the regression will be normally used if the if what I want to predict is a continuous variable, meaning it's uh, it's not categorical. And as you see here, there are lots of uh, libraries available to do uh, machine learning, uh, to do regression per se. So the, there is linear regression and various variants of linear regression like GLR, generalized linear regression. But um, the most uh, important or most frequently used among those are random forest and gradient boosted tree. So uh, random forest and gradient boosted tree are classif uh, der derivations of cla uh, decision tree. So what happens is uh, you predict a particular uh, variable, say stock price in this case, by asking a series of questions. Is parameter A greater than or less than this value? If par parameter B, yes or no? In that you ask a series of questions and based on those questions you end up predicting the final uh, stock price, which is our objective function here. But uh, the random forest is uh, slightly advanced and nuanced in the sense you create lots of trees. You, don't, you just don't want to uh, get the conclusion from just one particular model. You create lots of trees which are individual models themselves and uh, create an aggregation of out of those all the models so that the errors that there might be in each of the models are uh, evened out and you get the best result from all those models. That's the uh, ad, uh, objective here. And uh, Gradient boosted tree is also similar, wherein uh, you, you start with generate, generating one model and then you slowly uh, you generate a model and see how the model is uh, performed. You see that there are some, some places where it has not predicted very accurately. So you just give more weights to those, take those values and uh, go to the next model. And like this, you, you are refining over the previous model one step by one step. So you see the previous model and you find out there are some errors, take that and then develop a new model to overcome those errors. So you go as uh, like this on and on till um, you can find the best model possible with the available resources. So there are lots of, uh, depending on the data, you can do isotonic regression if it's an in always an incremental data. So there are various uh, types of things that are available. Uh, for uh, you to use depending on what the objective function is okay this classification so uh, l the regression where our objective function is to predict a continuous variable like price or uh, uh, any, anything that uh, is continuous here we want to have uh, we want to predict discrete values or say categories yes or no questions will the participants find this um, lecture useful yes or no depending on a various, uh, lots of attributes or uh, we have um, uh, this is lots of this is used in the sports uh, analytics areas a lot so you see lots of uh, football players playing in college they are uh, good so you can predict based on their uh, college uh, season performance whether they will be picked up by any NFL team or not based on their scores based on uh, their games and uh, based on their uh, competitions so these are normally used to predict yes or no, where uh, it becomes binomial, uh, it's only two yes or no, or even multinomial like say categories, good, better, best. So it can be any categorical multinomial or binomial categories. Here also there are lots of uh, types available uh, uh, depending on what your objective function is. So uh, you can use some multi-layer perceptron model for per se, which is probably the most advanced and most uh, used now. Uh, and the many studies have indicated that, for example, this model is the most accurate when compared to uh, when running through the same problem through other models that have been listed here. So multi-layer perceptron is a neural network model wherein um, you uh, create each and every iterations so you go by iteration by iteration so you have the first layer then you go the second layer third layer till you achieve your objective function this uh, this neural network framework is developed to mimic how the brain performs so that's that's why the name neural network so how the neurons in our brain function as uh, when they are connected to one another so you perform an operation and then you pass on to the operation to the next neuron and and so forth till you get the final objective function yeah, this is uh, another grouping of uh, variables that we want to uh, perform in real life. 
for example, as a, I may be an insurance, uh, medical insurance provider, and I want to know that among the claims that I receive, which, which are fraudulent ones and which are not. So based on characteristics like uh, how many times that a person has claimed, uh, what is the disease that uh, he has gotten treatment for, what is the hospital setting that he went to, based on many parameters like that, I may want to classify, uh, sorry, I may want to cluster my claims into one or many categories so that uh, I may want to find out which are the risky claims that I want to investigate more in detail in the future. So one difference of uh, clustering from the previous two things is this is an unsupervised learning framework. For example, uh, the previous two uh, regression and classification models had, uh, had historical data to learn from. For example, we saw that in the past, a person who, um, uh, NFL player who got drafted, a college player who got drafted into NFL had these characteristics. So and we can predict based on those whether a future player will get uh, drafted or not. But in case of clustering, there is no past data to learn from. That's why it's called unsupervised learning. So it uh, predicts the model without any history or training data to lean on. The next thing is called as collaborative filtering, which is the recommender systems. Uh, so uh, all of us uh, would uh, have observed that when you go inside an Amazon site, just when you are looking at a product, you have uh, five different products that are recommended uh, at the bottom of the screen. People who have bought this also bought. People who saw this also saw. So these are the recommender systems. Based on my past behavior uh, and based on similar profiles that uh, have looked into this particular product, what are the other products that uh, can be sold? This is one application here and even in, which is uh, the underlying uh, model of that is the collaborative filtering process. So we saw a series of uh, data preparation activities which we call the feature engineering and also we saw multivarious model models depending on what objective data we can use one or many of those so uh, some there is an uh, framework called pipeline which is uh, given by spark which is uh, great which is of great help to developers such as me because uh, normally what we do is we have to go through uh, lots and lots of process to uh, do the model first we have to get the attributes then we have to clean them we have to merge them so uh, there is minimum of eight to ten steps we do before we actually develop the final model and you have to do this for the training data meaning uh, you train the model or you develop the model based on a set of observations and then once you have the model developed you need to test the model on another set of observations which we call the testing data but the testing data is also you need to undergo all these eight to ten processes which are hugely time consuming and frankly uh, non value adding i don't need to do all this again and again um, so pipeline what it does is it gives a framework wherein i just need to pass uh, here if you see i just need to pass the both the training and testing data to this pipeline and all the individual steps say here there are two steps but if i have to do 10 eight steps or 10 steps all these are done by automatically by the pipeline itself i don't need as a user i don't need to do individually both for training data and for testing data all the data transformations and the model prepping i don't need to do individually so what it does is there are two components uh, to this pipeline how it does is that it uses an estimator uh, component wherein based on the training data or the data with which i will develop a model i will fit the model i will create that model and there is then the transform transformer component which will be used uh, using the model that was already created in the step one. I will use that model to uh, and, uh, uh, use, uh, apply the data on that particular model to test the uh, accuracy or the feasibility of the model in the next step. So this uh, this is one of the components which makes life a lot easier and uh, reduces a lot of non-valid adding activities for the developer per se. Then uh, we go to another uh, interesting topic and uh, call the model tuning part. Normally uh, what happens in the model development or uh, prediction uh, development process is that we develop a model and then we find that uh, there is a, the results are not that good. We again go through another iteration, we change some input parameters that go through the model uh, like uh, how many number of clusters I should have, what should be the maximum uh, tree depth in a classification problem for for example so there are lots of parameters that go into each of these models so what we do is we tweak one or two or many of these models one by one to see if the performance of the model is improving 
and again this is very tedious and a non value adding uh, process wherein i already developed the model i am spending a lot and lot of time to improvise that model what spark does is it gives an automatic framework wherein i can at one place specify all the different options for the parameters for example i can say for parameter 1 these are the options for parameter 2 these are the options and the model tuning frame uh, functionality itself take care to to generate the model in all the uh, exhaustive list of options for example one model is developed based on option 1 one model is developed based on option 2 like that it develops model based on all the available options and gives us the best option in one go so that we don't need to develop the model uh, each and every time and see if the results have improved how does it do the first step is uh, to split the data um to tune the model uh, i need to develop the model and then find out which model is the best so uh, i need to first split the data and there are two or many ways of splitting the data and then uh, i have to use an estimator or i have to apply this tuning on a particular model so some of the models that are these are regressions classification and in, in regression classification we saw many models so we can use this model tuning to tune any of those and then um, we can also obviously we need to test uh, we need to set the parameters that need to be tuned some of the examples that i just mentioned depending on that particular model in problem there are uh, 10 to 12 parameters that may need to be tuned and each of those parameters can have three or four options that we can give so for each option in each parameter or model is developed and then uh, whichever is the best model it will be uh, given to the user with those selected parameters if you don't have any questions to discuss i will ask my colleague neeta to come and uh, actually show you what we have been uh, talking about in theoretical framework thank you